Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Brightworks. Today we're going to be taking a quick look at what an economy is in Beyond All Reason. It's kind of a broad, general uh, claim, but it should be easy enough to describe. As you can see in front of us, we have almost all of the economy structures available to you in the game. And uh, we'll, we'll work our way through this. But uh, we'll start from the top in case you might be brand new to the real-time strategy genre. You're stepping into this uh, this game coming from maybe first-person shooters or uh, roguelikes or whatever it may be. We're happy to have you here. It's a lovely little community we've got. And uh, I think you're going to enjoy your time. But there are some things that you'd probably like to understand about the way that economies work in this game. And uh, I'm here to hopefully alleviate some of that stress from your shoulders. So in Beyond All Reason, there are two main resources, and that's going to be your metal, which you can see up here, and your energy, which is the yellow bar over here. So you have a silver bar and a yellow bar, and both of those are your two resources in the game. Why do you need resources? Well, if you go to a laboratory, which is where your units are produced, you can hover over them and see that the units themselves cost a certain amount of metal, indicated by the white number, and energy, indicated by the yellow number over on the left-hand side of the screen. When I click this button, that much resource will be expended and the unit will pop out. Here you can see we've produced a little mace. We can now use this unit to our advantage, and uh, you, you want to continue producing units to win the game, obviously. So that being said, in Beyond All Reason, a lot of times the victory comes down to economy. It comes down to who can produce a better way of producing units. And producing units boils, da boils back to uh, how, much, how much metal you can pull out of the ground or funnel back into your armies uh, and how much energy you can generate. So without further ado, let's talk about some of the things that make up your economy in Beyond All Reason. First and foremost, you have the metals. I have grouped all of the metal, the metal uh, resource extractors here, the, the, the metal generators here, uh, for your convenience. And you can see that there's not really a whole lot of options. There are some others that we'll talk about here in just a minute. Um, but these are the main three right here. You have metal, well, main two, really. You have metal extractors, both a normal and an advanced metal extractor. Check out my tech tiers uh, tutorials, by the way, in case you want to know about the tech one, tech two, which you can see the constructors for over here. But anyway, you have metal extractors here and here, and both of these are going to pull metal out of the ground and put it into your wallet. You also have energy converters, and what these do is convert a certain amount of energy every second into metal that then goes back into your bank. So the advanced one converts 600 energy into 10.3 metal per second, and the default one, the, the regular energy converter, converts 70 energy into one metal per second. That means that uh, eventually you transition away from the metal extractors because these can only go on very specific points, as you can see here. Let me actually detonate, detonate this, and you can see one of these metal extractor points. These will always be indicated. You can also hit F4 to take a look at these. But when you, when you see these metal extractor points, that means you should probably get a metal extractor on there in order to boost your economy. But eventually you run out of metal extractor points and there's nowhere else to go. Uh, and so at that point, you need to start transitioning into an energy-based economy. It's a perfect segue for talking about some of the energy producers in the game. So here we have the T1 uh, resource or the T1 energy producers up front, followed by the T2 in the back here. Uh, so let's talk about the T1 real quick. Uh, the first thing that you always have access to is the T1 Solar Collector. This is a uh, high metal cost, low energy yield uh, energy producer, and it can be very, very inefficient, but it is constant. And so it will produce that lovely 20 energy per second uh, when you so need it. But it, it comes at a whopping cost of 155 metal. Never mind my metal costs here. These were tweaked for ease of setting up this video, but uh, I, I have most of these values memorized anyway. <laughs> Uh, so, so they're very high in metal, very, very metal dense, as I would call it. Uh, but they do give you that nice, uh, constant energy generation. Next up, you have the wind turbine, which costs a little bit less, uh, but it also fluctuates. So you have to understand, uh, one of the core mechanics in Beyond All Reason is the wind speed up in the top corner or the, the, the top right hand side, more like the top middle though, of your heads up display. You have the wind speed here. And the wind speed is 
how how much energy your uh, wind turbine is going to produce. So if you look at the bottom left hand corner, you can see that that number is fluctuating as the wind speed changes. So the wind turbines are sort of a risk in a sense. They're like a calculated risk where if you know that the wind speed is going to be good on the map, then it's worth building these. They're a lot less less uh, dense on metal than the solar panels, and they have the potential of being more efficient, but you do have to build a whole lot of them. And finally, you have the most efficient T1 energy producer, and it is the advanced solar collector. Uh, coming in at 370, uh, th three, yeah, 370 metal, this, this is by far the most expensive uh, T1 energy producer, but it also produces a whopping 75 energy per second. In almost, in almost every case, these are going to be the most efficient way, but they are very metal dense. So you do have to be careful not to spend all of your metal on advanced solar collectors. Diversify your economy. Make sure that you spend some of your metal on advanced solar collectors, some of your metal on wind turbines, and you're going to be in a really nice spot. What I always warn people about is to always eat up your T1 solar panels. You can hit E to reclaim in this game, if you have a unit that can reclaim, that is. And uh, you can always eat up the, the resources from a particular building. So if I wanted to eat up a solar panel, I could eat it up and then put its resources into the, uh, into the advanced solar panel here. But anyways, that's, uh, that's, that's the end of the T1 energy producers. Now let's talk about some of the T... Oh, no, sorry, that isn't the end of the T1. We have one more way over here. If we take a look, you can see these are the final two. And they're basically just the same. Well, at least the, ener the energy converter is basically the same as the other one. Again, it just converts energy into metal for your advantage. Uh, but here we have the tidal generator. And this is another one where it's a set statistic based on the map. Uh, so it does change based on... Or it doesn't change when you're in the map, but it does vary from map to map. Uh, and so it's important to check that and see if it's worth it. Uh, generally speaking, anything above 15 is going to be efficient. Anything above 20 is going to be super efficient. And anything, uh, if it, it, the higher you get up there, it just becomes even more and more efficient. Um, to the point where you don't even want to build anything else. You, you basically just want to build these tidal generators. Anyway, uh, oh, sorry. And there's the geothermal plant as well. How could I forget? Uh, the geothermal plant is the most efficient energy means for the uh, T1 era. However, it is not always available. There are specific points on the map that are geothermal points. Let me uh, find one on this map here for you. There we are. Geothermal plants look like this. Little smoke billows coming out of the ground with some green circles highlighting them around. Uh, if you see one of those, it's a place where you can put down a geothermal plant. Now, geothermal plants cost 300 and, or sorry, 560 metal. Um, and they, they cost 13,000 energy. So they're very, very energy expensive to get up and running. However, they produce a whopping 300 energy per second, which is miles more efficient than uh, anything out of the, the T1 bracket. So if you can get a geothermal plant, you always should get a geothermal plant. They're tremendously efficient. Okay, now we're ready to move on to T2. Just a reminder, this is all just energy production, right? We're going to get into how you actually use this, why you use this, all that good stuff uh, here in a little bit. But for now, just bear with me as we continue to cover the uh, T2 energy producers. So first and foremost, you have the fusion reactor. Both both teams have this, by the way. There, there's uh, mirrors across all these. I only cover the uh, things that both factions have here. The fusion reactor produces 1,000 energy for the cost of 4,300 metal. A little bit cheaper for Cortex, but uh, around the same ballpark. Uh, and for, for what you get, it is the first step into a proper late game economy. Uh, it's, it's much more efficient than any of the T1 structures, uh, including the geothermal, I believe. Although they might, uh, but from an en a metal to energy perspective, it's, uh, it's probably not as efficient. I, I wouldn't recommend tearing down your geothermals in order to pay for a fusion reactor, uh, just because the geothermals are not very metal dense. Uh, but the the fusion reactor is a very early, a very good way to get an early energy lead. Uh, after that, the the next big step, and it is a big step, is the advanced fusion reactor. Now this costs a whopping nine thousand seven hundred metal. Again, a little bit cheaper for Cortex, but uh, still same ballpark. Uh, almost. Well, yeah, a little bit more than double the cost of, of a fusion reactor. So when you when you want to step up to these, you have to be really ready to support it with your economy. But this does produce a huge 3000 energy per second. And this is the ultimate late game. These are what you these are what you want to build in mass when you want to start getting into the 
the uh, truly ridiculous amount of unit production that we sometimes see come out in those ultra long uh, late game scenarios. So this is this is really what you're aiming for here. Uh, but you have to be able to support this. These these are not cheap and they're very expensive to build. And we'll talk about uh, the other quote unquote hidden resources, the the alternate constraints um, that come into play when you're when you're playing beyond a reason, but really any RTS game. Uh, as far as other T2 energy sources go, there are also advanced geothermal plants. These are just an upgrade to the regular geothermal plants. And just like the other geothermal plant, it is tremendously efficient, like bizarrely efficient. 1,600 metal for a uh, advanced geothermal plant gets you 1,250 energy. So we can look real quick and see that this is, you know, uh, basically 1.6 thousand metal versus 4.3 thousand metal. Uh, for a regular fusion reactor, which produces less energy. So the advanced geothermal plant is uh, by far the most coveted energy producer. When you're getting into that late game, it can give you a huge, huge, huge boost in the economy uh, and, and very quickly at that. So always be sure to go after one of these advanced geothermal plants. This comes out of a T2 constructor, um, as well as any of these T2 uh, economy centers. And that's always something to uh, keep in mind. So now let's talk about that. That basically covers all of the uh, T2 energy structures. There are also alternates for Armada. It's the Prude for the geothermal plant, and it just is a uh, less explosive geothermal plant. For Cortex, it's going to be the Cerberus, which is a big three headed uh, artillery cannon. Much cooler, in my opinion, but uh, those are alternatives to the geothermal plant. Um, feel free to experiment with those, but they're not really discussed for efficiency's sake. Um, typically, you would build one of those for some sort of strategic reason. Now, there are other ways to get metal as well, um, and I've already talked about that slightly. One of them is with resbots or reclaiming in general. You can reclaim with any constructor, um, but resbots are probably the most common. What you can do with the resbot is hit E to enter your reclaim mode, and then you can eat up anything around. So if I hit E on this lab, it'll come over here and it'll digest this lab and uh, fold that metal back into my economy and then I can reuse it elsewhere. Now what you really want to do with this is eat metal off of corpses on the front line. This is, uh, this, is, this is one of the main cruxes upon which victory and beyond all reason often hinges. And so because of that, you want to make it a habit of always building a couple of resbots or a few extra constructors or some, something that has build power in order to uh, eat metal off the front lines. But since I mentioned build power, why don't we talk about that? Since that's also one of the uh, hidden constraints in Beyond All Reason. Every building in this game has a certain cost. So you can see this bot lab costs 65 metal and 120 uh, energy. This, this uh, in a normal game, will be 650 and 1,200 energy. Um, I've tweaked the cost here, again, for ease of setup. Uh, but you can imagine that those resources, the, you, you have to put those resources into the building. And unlike games like, for instance, StarCraft, where you uh, save up the money and then deposit it all at once to start construction of the building, and then the building just goes until it's finished. In this game, buildings will remain unfinished if they are... Uh, if, if they are essentially un, unprovided with build power. So build power represents the amount of resources that you can put into a building at any one moment. It's the, it's the amount of uh, resources that goes into a project and it can, be, it can be spread between a lot of different things. So if I take this constructor and I select the construction turret under the build menu, I can build these construction turrets and show you one of the most common ways that you can improve build power in your base. So a construction turret normally has 200 build power. Again, numbers are tweaked here, but uh, normally 200 build power. And the reason you build these construction turrets is because uh, you need to provide more build power to stream units out quicker. So for instance here, let me set up a T3 production facility. T3 is the highest that you'll go in Beyond All Reason. And so for that, the, uh, the, the resource cost is the highest. So we put this T3 up here, and we are going to stream Titans across the map here. Uh, Titans being the most expensive T3 unit. unit is ready. And you can see that, oh, yep, T3 unit is ready. Um, and so you can see that with the, uh, with the build power set up here, we're streaming out Titans at a consistent and steady rate. Now, of course, these numbers are tweaked, so we're streaming out a 
ungodly amount of titans at the moment. But uh, if we take these and we have them all eat themselves to death, which is always satisfying to do, um, you can see that once we've eaten all of them, production slows down a lot. So you can see how tightly grouped these guys are. They were all right next to each other versus now they're spread out tremendously. So that's, that's a factor of build power. And uh, that's a very crude example of how build power works, but you can imagine it basically as how much of your own money you can spend. Build power is your spending power. Now there's another uh, resource limitation that I don't talk about very often, but it is important to keep in mind, and that's APM. Your uh, actions per minute, or action potential measurement, uh, as I like to call it. Uh, your <laughs> it's, it, that's unconventional, but that's a that's a Brightworks trademark right there. Um, when you're when you're controlling units in Beyond All Reason, oftentimes the inclination is to micro them as heavily as possible. So constantly trying to make sure that they're doing the appropriate thing, taking as good an engagement as you can, and making sure that every unit you produce is being used to its most uh, most most highly high effectiveness, its highest effectiveness. There's the words. What ends up happening though is that when you start producing units like this, these big streams of units, what you really end up with are these engagements that can uh, become much, much greater than is efficient to micro on a uh, a microscopic scale. So, uh, one of the one of the main limitations in uh, Beyond a Reason, I guess you should define what I mean by APM is how how often you can click around the battlefield, right? So whether that's literally just the amount of clicks that you can make per second versus the amount of attention that you can divert all over the place, um, that that is all essentially your APM. And uh, measuring that is always a bit of a tricky thing. It's not always a perfect example of how good or bad a player is. It's not really a measure of skill at all. Um, but that speed can be a limiting factor, and if you're new to the game, I, I would guess that your APM, especially if you're new to RTS in general, your APM is going to be lower, and so you need to you need to be aware of the fact that you, you have to spend it accordingly. So what do I need by, mean by spending APM? Um, that's, that's every time you're doing something, like you're planning out a big structure, so if I want to uh, set up a big chain of these fusion reactors over here, and I want to build a big, I don't know, a big field of energy converters over here, um, you can see that I did that with relative ease, but that's because I know all the shortcuts, shortcuts, and the the menus and the keys and everything. And I've been playing this game for a pretty pretty good amount of time now. <laughs> but when you're unfamiliar with the game and its concepts, uh, it's going to be more difficult to do that. And so, what for me costs, uh, I guess, uh, about five five actions to set up each of these units to build these big grids. Uh, might cost you a little bit more. It might take you a little longer. You might have to click around a little bit more, um, and you might you might have to figure it out. So one of the things that you can do, the reason I say that, the ring, reason I bring this up at all is to say that you can improve your APM um, and you can improve your efficiency. Uh, and, and what I mean by that is you can you can learn to build units and build buildings and manage all of that in a more efficient way. And that can, although it won't increase your total APM, it will. It will alleviate stress on your APM and allow you to spare it microing units on the front line or uh, doing you know other things that you might want to be doing around the map. Anyways, that's all of the economy tips, tricks, and uh, explanations that I have for you here. I have uh, more detailed breakdowns, but I wanted to make a very, very general guide for uh, what exactly an economy is and why you need it in Beyond All Reason. And so hopefully this answers any questions that some of you who might be brand new to this game have about our lovely little uh, pastime here. Uh, this has been the Brightworks, and uh, I've enjoyed having this moment to uh, talk with you. Hope you enjoyed the video as well, and I will see you in the next one. Wait, 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 sorry. Before you go, I did forget something. Wanted to throw this on here because I know it would make some people confused. Uh, there are T2 energy producers and energy converters for the naval field. We have the naval fusion reactor for 5,200 metal. Uh, and 33, wow, was it really 33,000 energy? Very expensive. Um, we And as well, we have the naval energy converter, 650 energy into 11 metal per second uh, for the naval field. Wanted to throw that out there because I did realize that I forgot it. Didn't want to be, uh, didn't want to disinclude that. There's also a T2 metal extractor. I don't have a convenient place to show you, but I'll just put one down right here. And you can see it extracts metal as well at a higher rate under the sea. All right, that's uh, that's really all. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.